Good morning, everyone. My name is Carolyn Wilson. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Beaumont Health. I'd like to thank you, first of all, for joining us here this morning at Beaumont Hospital Royal Oak. We very much, as Beaumont, wanted to host this event, this news conference at our largest hospital, to reinforce and help emphasize the great need for a regional mass transit system in our area. Beaumont is honored to have so many distinguished guests here today who share our belief that a connected, thriving regional transit system would help Southeast Michigan become a healthier place to live and work. As one of the state's largest employers and Michigan's largest healthcare system, we do believe a more coordinated and reliable regional mass transit system would greatly benefit Beaumont. Our current employees, our providers, our future employees who want to work here. Beaumont has a large geographic footprint. We have eight hospitals and 145 outpatient sites that span across multiple Michigan counties. A regional transit would create great career opportunities at Beaumont for people who rely on public transportation. This, of course, would help boost our economy as well. We already serve so many people across the region who use SMART or DDOT buses to access healthcare, wellness programs, and related services. The ability to more reliably help more people move from one county or community to another is essential to the overall quality of life for any region, especially when it comes to the delivery of quality healthcare. Now, I'd like to turn this over to Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. Thank you, good morning, and thank you, Carolyn. Uh, I'll start out by saying what she said. Uh, a year and a half ago, I took a bus ride from Detroit to Novi to demonstrate a common regional transit experience that residents face. That trip took me two and a half hours. I had to walk a mile and a half to get to my destination down roads that had no sidewalk, uh, cars whizzing by at, at fast rates of speed. On the trip, I met a remarkable young woman. Uh, she uh, was riding the bus with me, uh, and she told me that on a daily basis, she takes a three-hour bus ride to work, she works eight hours, and she takes a three-hour bus ride home. I know I couldn't do that, and I don't think anybody else should be asked to do that either. We need transit. It's not just for employees or students or residents. Businesses and corporations need workers, and they need to retain and attract talent to stay competitive. We have seniors who cannot get to this hospital because they lack mobility and find themselves stuck in their homes. They deserve better. For those of us who want to keep our children in this region, we need to make a serious effort and attempt at providing real public transportation. We all know the RTA millage almost passed in 2016. Some of us made an attempt to try to get a better plan on the ballot in 2018, but we never got the full support of elected leadership in the region. I'm happy today to be standing here with the Oakland County Executive, the Mayor of the City of Detroit, and the Washtenaw County Board Chair, who all feel the same way I do. We need transit and we can't afford to wait. While I've always wanted uh, to see a four-county transit plan under the RTA, I respect the fact that the Macomb County leadership feel that it's not a priority at this time. I also believe we as a region have to be able to start somewhere. So today, I am here with my colleagues to announce a new tool to get us to a three-county plan. The Municipal Partnership Act was enacted in 2011 to allow the government to foster more effective and efficient service delivery. Under the act, voters can approve millages to fund specific government services. Today we are requesting three amendments to the Municipal Partnership Act. We think that would improve our ability to fund transit services, and these amendments are, one, allow for approval of a municipal partnership levy by a majority vote within a participating jurisdiction. 
Two, exempt the participating government from the local millage cap, same as the DIA uh, or the zoo. And third, to protect the levied revenues from DDA and TIF captures so that the resources go to transit and not other places. I want to be very clear. This is not a transit plan. This is legislation that could get us to a transit plan. If these amendments pass, it allows Wayne, Oakland, and Washtenaw leaders to negotiate a service area so we can develop a three-county transit plan with public engagement. Our goal is to see something on the ballot in November 2020. I also want to stress that this is not another layer of government. Our hope is through the Municipal Partnership Act, we can utilize the existing services of the RTA, SMART, DDOT, and the RIDE, uh, and the revenues that it creates. I'll close with this. For over a half century, Southeast Michigan has become one of the most segregated places in America. For over a half century, we have been trying to get fully connected public transportation in our area. For over a half century, we've been cutting ourselves off from a substantial portion of our own talent base because they can't access opportunity. Talent is king in the economy, and economic development is becoming as much a part of, a part of talent cultivation as it is talent attraction. We are leaving way too much homegrown talent out of the system. This is a key step toward a truly inclusive economy. I, for one, am tired of waiting, and I believe this is our best shot at getting there, and I hope our friends in Lansing agree. Now I would like to introduce the sponsor of this bill, the chair of government ops, Jason Shepard. Jason. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody that is here, the press, uh, all the local leaders. Um, this is actually a, a very exciting time for us here in the state of Michigan, and that's the reason for that is because, as you all are well aware, uh, we are working hard on transportation plans and what we do for the future, and it's not just this particular bill that we're talking about. It's a comprehensive approach of what we're trying to do to improve infrastructure and dollars utilized in the entire state of Michigan. As you know, several bills were introduced. I also sit on the House Transportation Committee, so we're debating these bills currently. I'm also in House Leadership as the majority whip. So involved in a lot of these conversations going forward and how do we fix a lot of our problems here in the state of Michigan. Living here in Southeast Michigan and being a representative of Monroe County and <clears throat> having a lot of citizens that work in the Wayne, Washtenaw, Oakland areas, traveling up here a lot, understanding how important it is to have some sort of plan to help grow, to help bring new companies, new businesses, and also innovative ways to move people around. That has been something that we have lacked here, and you can see it firsthand. You can see it when companies come to look to this region, one of the first things they ask is about our transportation and our transit, and what do we have, and what are we doing, and what's our future hold? I feel with this bill and the amendments that have been mentioned, this will add another tool in the comprehensive toolbox for what our legislature can do. And also look at it from other perspectives. Even though today we're here, we're talking about these three counties, nothing precludes other areas of the state to utilize this effort. Nothing precludes them from creating transit and transportation issues to solve those issues in other parts of our state. So I was happy to be asked to be sponsor of this bill. It's been great working with these leaders including the mayor and county executives, to figure out the best way and the best path forward. Now, to give you some nuts and bolts on this situation, obviously I'm here because I want this to be a bipartisan supported effort. I don't want this to be one-sided. I don't want this to be talked about as, you know, Republican versus Democrat. This is a state of Michigan issue that we have to solve, number one. Number two, the chairman of the Transportation Committee, who's from the northern part of our state, has agreed to continue to help me move this forward, not through, just through his committee, but through our two-step process in the House and get it on the floor for a vote. My goal when we return in December is to take these up for hearings right away, to start moving the process forward, 
and I'd love to see it out of the House in the month of December and over to the Senate so that they can negotiate and they can discuss and they can take their next steps to get it to the governor's desk. This is a very important step for this region. This is a very important step for our state. And I wanna to stress to all of you, none of this is a mandate. None of this is something that's forced upon the citizens. This is all something that it can be chosen to be done based upon the county's involvement and the voters in each jurisdiction. So I wanna thank you all for coming out. I wanna thank these leaders for everything that they've done to continue to move this forward. And I also wanna keep pressing forward and get something done so that we can see a great improvement in this region on how we look at regional transit, how we look at infrastructure and transportation going forward, and let's keep this tool in the toolbox for us to use in the future. With that, you took my agenda. You're next, all right. We have our new Oakland County Executive, Mr. Coulter, come on up, sir. Thank you, sir. Yep. <laughs> Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you all for being here uh, at this beautiful facility in Beaumont, at Beaumont here at 13 Mile in Woodward, which I think is an important symbol of why this legislation is needed. Uh, Beaumont is the largest employer in Oakland County, not just at this campus, but at campuses throughout Oakland County. And it's critical, as the COO mentioned earlier, that they get their employees to, to jobs in this county, that they get families and patients to be able to come to the, these health facilities in our county. Uh, and it's important for our county's economic development, as has been mentioned. So my administration supports developing a robust transportation plan for Southeast Michigan for all of our residents, businesses, and communities. So we're asking the Michigan legislature, as you've heard, to give us this tool as we continue to work on a plan that makes sense for Southeast Michigan. It gives us more flexibility in determining the best way to draw up a new regional plan, which we're currently actively pursuing, and it meets the needs of all of our residents. I believe that if done right, improved transit and mobility has the potential to enhance our economic development, resolve workforce constraints that we've talked about, and improve the quality of life of all of our residents. To me, it is the key to creating the type of communities that will be attractive to our young people as we try to get them to stay in this region uh, after graduation. Now, some people have said, well, transit ridership is down. I wanna point out something. Fast Woodward, which is SMART's limited stop, high frequency bus service connecting Oakland County all the way from the city of Pontiac to downtown Detroit is rocking it. <laughs> and I see Jim Hertel here, John Hertel here, the, the leader of SMART, and I want to thank him for the innovations that they've done there. Since, it, since the SMART service began in, the, in just January of 2018, weekly ridership on the Woodward Corridor has increased 90% in just a year and a half. Is that right, John? I got the numbers right? 90%. And for me, that's just a glimpse of what future ridership could look like if we really created the right regional transit plan that moves people quickly and efficiently and affordably. I also think that this tool is important because it requires the involvement of our county boards of commission. I want to thank my uh, chair at the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, Dave Woodward, for being here. This is an, it's important that the county boards have a role in this conversation, and this legislation will allow us to do that. I also want to acknowledge my, count, my colleagues on the, uh, in the legislature because, as was mentioned, it's really important that this is a bipartisan effort. We all have a stake in the future of this region, the economic development of this region, and the quality of life here. And so I'm really excited that State Representative Jim Ellison and State Representative Mallory Mallow are here. They represent this area, and they understand the importance of transit to our region. So. Uh, uh, I look forward to working with the legislature, getting this done, and then, as uh, County Executive Evans said, more importantly, getting a plan before the county commissions and before the voters next year that can move our region forward. So I'm, I'm happy to be part of this group, and I'm also happy to introduce another integral part of this plan and a friend of Oakland County, and that is Mayor Duggan. <laughs> Well, good morning, and thank you uh, to Jason Shepard for the leadership, for Warren Evans, who's been a fighter on this issue from day one, and now uh, we've got great leadership on regional transit out of Oakland County uh, with Dave Coulter's arrival, and I think 
uh, that does change the conversation. I think the first regional transit plan I was involved in, I was the general manager of SMART in 1991. And we've been trying to do this ever since. And there has been a lot of progress made. I see John Hertels here, I think SMART has just done an outstanding job of the quality of service, the FAST program and the like. DDOT has 50% more buses on the road than we had six years ago. But a quarter of our residents in the city of Detroit do not own a car, which means their ability to get to work, to get to school, to get to entertainment is limited uh, by a transit system that's probably the worst uh, in the country. And so what has happened in the last couple of years is there's been unprecedented unprecedented cooperation between DDOT and SMART. For the first time, we have a DART pass. You buy a pass right now, you move from SMART to DDOT interchangeably, you don't have to buy separate tickets. We're coordinating our schedules, we're coordinating our bus stops. And this really led to a different way of thinking. We don't need to create another bus system to drop on top of what we have. We are now seamlessly coordinating uh, DDOT and SMART. And so we said, is there a way to go about this? Now. In 2011, the leadership of Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, and the governor all passed something called the Regional Transit Authority. And in, a decade later, it hasn't worked. And I think the reason it hasn't worked is obvious. It was a big bang theory uh, that if you were going to do anything, you needed five different jurisdictions to come together, Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, and Detroit. And if any one of those five wasn't on board with the plan, or their voters didn't support it, the whole region got zero. Uh, and I think in retrospect, the lack of flexibility uh, has kept us from making progress because the nature of, of government services, you improve as you see a need and not necessarily in one big bang. And so uh, we sat down, uh, I did with the Oakland County Executive, Mr. Coulter, and with County Executive Evans, and with Mark Hackle. And we said, how do we move this forward? And really it was in that conversation where County Executive Hackle said, I don't see it as a priority in Macomb County in the next year. And as we talked about our priorities, what evolved in this is a different approach. What instead, instead of the RTA bill, which requires all five to sign off at once, what if we had the ability through the Municipal Partnership Act to sit down and design exactly what we wanted for the people who were willing? And if Macomb County signs on this year, they are welcome. We would love to have them. If Macomb County sees this phenomenal program and the business community responds, as I'm hearing every day, that I want to locate my businesses where there's transit, maybe Macomb County joins us in 2022 or 2024. The beauty of this is you leave local control into this plan. And Macomb, if they don't join, and I still hope we get them to join the first time, they're going to be able to join our system, get exactly the service they want at whatever point they want. And so this is, in our minds, the right way forward. Ultimate flexibility of local officials uh, between the mayor, the county executives, the county commission, the city council, uh, to be able to decide what level of service do they want to take to the voters, how will it fit together. And so uh, if we can get this bill through the legislature all the way through by the early part of next year, we can be into community engagement meetings and what plans would look like, uh, and then potentially uh, be on the ballot in November 2020, but uh, nobody's going to repeat the mistakes of 2016. We're going to engage the people in the community who are going to use the service, help design the plan, uh, and I think, uh, I think that's ultimately going to be the key. So I feel like we got the right partners, I feel like we got the right leaders, uh, and as long as Jason Shepard gets the bill done, uh, we're going to get a transit system. Uh, and so with that, uh, let me introduce the other Jason, the head of the Washtenaw County yep. Board of Commissioners, Jason Morgan. Thank you all. Uh, I'm very proud to be here on behalf of Washtenaw County. Um, as the chair of our Board of Commissioners and as our chief elected official for the county, we are extremely proud to stand with these other regional leaders because it's about time that we have transit. And we have some fresh faces, we have some new energy, and I think we have a new tool that will allow us to get there. So we are extremely pleased to be here and part of this conversation. Um, I also want to recognize uh, County Commissioner Katie Scott, who's from Washington County here as well, and our County Administrator Greg Dill. Thank you both for being here. I think it's a testament to our, our care and our concern for uh, this issue. Um, 
I also want to note that um, we have Cynthia Wilbanks from the University of Michigan here, the VP of Government Relations there. Uh, the university, I understand, is very committed to this as well. Uh, so we have a lot of really good mo motivation and some good momentum moving forward. Washtenaw County is committed to working with our partners in Wayne, Oakland, City of Detroit uh, to develop a regional transportation system that works for our residents. Regional transportation is critical to ensuring inclusive economic opportunity and growth for our region. We're ready and willing to move forward with developing a three-county system, and as the mayor mentioned, we would love it to be a four-county system, but we don't have more time to wait. We have people who need transportation. We have students who want to get to school and get to the university. Uh, we have families who just want to get throughout our communities, and we know that transportation doesn't end at a county line. We know that transportation and mobility is ever increasing these days, and we want our people to be able to go between our counties, between our communities, and it strengthens us as a region, it strengthens the state of Michigan as a state, so we're very, very proud to be with you. Um, the MPA provides us that opportunity, we thank Representative Shepard for uh, being the leader on that and making sure that we have that tool available to us. So on behalf of Washtenaw County, uh, simply put, we're committed to regional transportation, we look forward to moving forward, and we really want to make sure that our residents have a new transportation system uh, come November 2020. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. I am Alicia Bell, chair of the Wayne County Commission, and I'd like to again thank Representative Shepard for taking the lead on this effort and all of our local officials who are here. I'd like to recognize my colleagues who are with me today, Commissioners Monique Baker McCormick, Commissioner Melissa Dobb, Commissioner, Al Commissioner Alona Varga, Commissioner Al Hadus, and Commissioner Sam Baydoon. And those I think are all that I saw. So what you've seen is so many of our commissioners from Wayne County are here because we are also very thrilled to be a part of this effort that is so needed. For over 10 years, I've been passionate about regional transportation and the importance it is to this region. Whether you're going to the doctor's office or to one of our great hospitals, whether you're going to your job or just to dine at our great restaurants throughout the region, we are in vital need of a regional transit system that works for everyone. When I say works for everyone, it should be all inclusive. All inclusive of the residents of Oakland County, Wayne County, and Washtenaw County. And I think this is the measure to finally get us there. For so long, we've been divided. For so long, this has been something that we've dreamed of, that we wanted to do. And this doesn't necessarily make it's going to happen right now, but this gives us the tool to make it a reality, hopefully before my 11 and 12 year old become grownups like us. So I'm hopeful that we can work together to finally have a regional transit system that will benefit all members of our great counties. And that's going to take us, the mayor mentioned, engagement, engagement by our residents, engagement in the community. Without that, this is never going to pass. Without that engagement, we will never have an efficient and effective regional transit system that we all know that we all deserve right here in Southeast Michigan. So I'm so happy to be here, so happy that I have my colleagues here, and this is going to be a great day as we move forward to make Michigan the greater state that it is and Southeastern Michigan the greatest region in the country. Thank you. And at this point, I'm sorry, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Chair of the Oakland County Commission, Mr. David Whitworth. And I'm also so happy, let me make this little side note, that in January, you had three new County Commission Chairs, myself, David, and Jason. So I think we're all in great hands. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's all it took. Uh, I, th good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Woodward. I have the great honor of being the chair of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Um, I want to introduce a couple of my colleagues that are also here. Uh, Commissioner Gwen Markham from Novi, Commissioner William Miller from Farmington. Uh, last November, we elected a pro-transit majority on the county board. Uh, what makes this different? Uh, Oakland County, my commitment, our board's commitment, we are going to get transit done in Southeast Michigan once and for all, and Oakland County is proud to be part of that partnership. It's, incredible, it's important to note, uh, I, I'm incredibly excited to be part of building a robust transit system that is going to increase frequency, increase span, um, and most importantly, build an inclusive economy that works for everybody. One that ensures that people who need to get to work can get to their job, but more importantly, to make sure that all people can get to where they want to go. 
this is going to happen. We are going to get this done. Thank you, Representative Shepard, for your leadership. This is the tool that's necessary to help carry us forward. Look forward to working with our new county executive, who's uh, been a solid leader on transit. We are going to make history and let today mark a new a level of regional partnership to move this region forward. Thank you very much. Let me introduce my good friend, uh, uh, Councilman uh, Scott Benson from the City of Detroit. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here advocating for regional transit at a with this austere um, delegation from the Wayne County, Oakland County, Wasanaw County, and the municipalities. As an advocate for public transit and the chair for the Public Health and Safety Standing Committee within the city of Detroit, and someone who for the last 10 years has been writing letters, I can remember being deployed to a Kuwait naval base in Operation Desert Storm, writing a letter to DDOT requesting that we put bike racks on our buses just as SMART had been doing and to see that when I got back from being deployed was huge. When we talk about public transit, we often think that it is a transit of last resort. And that's a problem and something that an investment of this nature can change. And so when we work with our partners from DDOT, like Angelica Jones, who was leading DDOT's head on how we work with our, our neighbors and how we make these type of investments to make sure that transit is not the transportation of last resort, that is transportation for all, and that we make sure that just because you're low income, that does not mean that you're low quality. Everyone deserves a strong regional transit system and an investment of this nature can make sure we bring that to fruition. So I'm looking forward to seeing a law from the state that allows for the voters to decide what they want to see and what type of investment they want to place in public transit. And so that I can advocate at the city of Detroit to my residents in the northeast side of Detroit and say, hey, this is the type of investment that we need and this is how your taxpayer dollars are being used to push our region, our city, and your quality of life forward. Just looking forward to that and really excited about that and with that I'd like to reintroduce or w welcome back Wayne County Executive Evans one of our partners in public transit and just wanted to say that I also took that same bus trip from the south portion of my district it to the suburban showcase it took me three hours three buses and we took it to the end of the bus line and where the sidewalks ended as well and because I was with the director of true we had high heels and church shoes involved <laughs> because we were going to a mythical job interview, but I didn't have the uh, fortitude to keep take the walk, so we hopped in a lift and took that the rest of the way. And that meant that, it, that we also added another $20 onto our trip, which is something a job seeker from the east side of Detroit doesn't have the opportunity to do. So this is how we're able to get that investment in public transit together and make sure all of our residents have opportunities. Yeah, I was on my way to Best Buy in Novi. Uh, I got to tell you, I didn't get the job either. I was too tired to, <laughs> was too tired to fill out the, uh, uh, the application when I got there. Um, I think you've heard the, the group and you've heard the, the, hopefully the commitment and the passion in the group uh, to try to get this moving forward. Uh, we'll be happy to take some questions now and then after the questions whenever we stop that most of us will be uh, available and hang around uh, for interv individual interviews if people want to try to do that so uh, hopefully uh, if we don't get the questions here the questions here go go too long you can still talk to others right executive Coulter, the yeah. north oakland uh, and its objection to having to pay for mass transit that it will not receive has been an impediment along the way. Mm -hmm. What has changed and what in, in the proposal do you expect would happen for North Oakland that might change minds? You know, one of the issues with the 2016 plan, uh, it, because we spent a lot of time looking at what that plan was, what were its strengths, what were its weaknesses, where did it fail? Because it did fail in Oakland County, not by much, but it did, and especially in the region that you're talking about. Is frankly, if you look at it, there wasn't enough value in the north end of the county. Uh, I, I think if I was a, a resident of Independence Township, I might not have voted for it either. I just don't think the value was there. So we have an opportunity, and we're still working out the details, to to increase the value that they see in transit options uh, 
And, but then what we're going to do is once we craft a plan, the voters are also ultimately going to have to approve it. So we're going to go up there and talk to them. And we're going to say, hey, is this what you're looking for? Are these the kinds of services that, that would be more attractive to you? So we're going to have those discussions with them. We know that that's where the resistance came from. But we're going to have real, honest, meaningful conversations with them. We've already started those to see if we can add enough value to this plan to make it attractive to them. A uh, question for State Rep. Shepard. Um, just wondering if you could explain the revisions um, uh, that you're, you're making in this and also why. Just kind of a little bit more, give us a little more meat on that. You want some more meat on the bones after asking me right now? <laughs> Great. Um, bottom line is this. Obviously, you heard from previous speakers that when this has been attempted, there's always these one little facets of things that can just tank the entire plan. We have to come up with something that where when the regions want to come together, when the counties want to come together, that there's a streamlined effort for them to try to get out to the voters, get countywide votes, and make it happen. Some of the things that we're looking at and uh, some of the things that are in this bill changes the current to make some amendments to that. Obviously, we're not going to be looking for each individual municipality within each county. Um, it's going to be a county-wide type vote and system uh, through that. There's also not going to be dollars taken out. Once a millage is passed, we don't want to see that dollars go to all sorts of different things. We'd like to see the millage dollars go to what it's supposed to do. And I also think it just makes it easier for counties to get in, get out, create agreements with each other, and not have to worry so much about one little thing sinking what they're doing. Those are the main points of this. Obviously, as we get into the debate, as we get into uh, the nuts and bolts of committee discussions, other things may come up to be discussed. But one of the key components of this that I, that I was mostly attracted to is the fact that not only is it just for this region, but statewide, also, as you heard from before, the Macomb County Group had some reservations about wanting to join into something, which they felt like they had to do that in the past. This allows them to ne maybe not take this first option, but maybe take it later on and work within an agreement. Those are key components and key differences that I feel that makes this more successful because of the fact that we can now look at it as a true regional approach and not trying to piecemeal things together from little individual areas that may or may not like it. You taking questions? Right. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, given that you anticipate this will be on the ballot this time next year, is there a framework for a plan, and will it just be buses as previous plans? The framework is quick, quick, quick. Um, please don't lose sight of the fact that what we're doing here today is trying to get modifications to the Municipal Partnership Act. The plan isn't done. We know the plan isn't done. So the timetable is if we can get the modifications by the end of the year, whatever, early in the spring, we're going to work as quickly as we can to get a plan that we can all agree on, uh, because then we need the public engagement, which is critical. Uh, and obviously, we have to be able to get out to the public in significant intensity to be able to get the plan out, maybe even make some modifications to the plan to be able to get on the 2020 ballot. So a long way of saying, not specific guidelines now, but it's hurry, hurry, hurry. Not slipshot hurry, just hurry. A lot of the work has been done you know, in 2016. A lot of the work's been done in 2028 and 2018. We're not starting from scratch again, but we certainly are tweaking and modifying. So just to follow up, so we are, we're talking about mainly buses, though like coordinating the bus system? Quickly, those are the things you start with right away, but the plan, uh, a long-term plan, and you remember a plan will involve a lot of other things. There potentially light rail, lots of other things that would be a part of the plan. They wouldn't immediately hit the ground. Obviously, other work has got to be done, and we have to work through that, but obviously the uh, Michigan Avenue corridor uh, to Detroit through Wayne County to, the, uh, to Washtenaw, uh, and up to the airport is a critical part of our thinking, uh, but obviously it's not something you roll out automatically, but it certainly is part of the, I would say more than dream, part of the plan. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was curious to know why it took this long to take this path, revising the bill, and I don't know if you all saw the latest plan the RTA presented, it's a million dollar plan. I'm curious to know, all generally agree on that plan. The initial RTA plan?
Oh, the 2018 plan. I, I, I think we all, and I don't want to speak for everybody because you always get in trouble when you do that, uh, but I think we all found the RTA plan to be uh, too cumbersome and we found it to be somewhat divisive in terms of different interests. And so we just see the Municipal Partnership Act is one that's easier on everybody. Uh, those who want to be involved can, those who don't can't. There's always the ability to opt in at a, at a later date. We just see this as a smoother vehicle to be able to, uh, number one, get it on the ballot, and number two, um, uh, achieve the goals that we want with transit. I'll take one more. Chad. 2016, there was a 1.2 mil plan. Last year, you tried to pursue a 1.5 mil. Do you have a number in mind, uh, if, especially if this is going to get smaller? Uh, is the mill going to go up or is it going to go down? You're going to have to really kind of start with some basic uh, millage. I, I think you're going to think I'm waffling on this, but the truth of the matter is I really don't know at this point. The plan will probably be dealing with less revenue. Uh, but what that will allow us to do that will be um, receptive to the communities involved still is going to take a lot of work. And so I don't know what the number uh, is going to be, uh, but as soon as we know, uh, you'll make us tell you anyway, Chad. So. <laughs> Thank you. Speakers will be around afterwards. All right, we'll more. stick around. All right, we'll all stick around. It's a <laughs> Nancy.